welcome to this US Sports Special. We're speaking to a very, very special uh, athlete at the just ended Commonwealth Games. She was one of only two track and field athletes to get a medal in the women's long jump. I'm talking uh, about none other than Deborah Aqua. Deborah, welcome to Ghana. Thank you so much. How are you? Are you, are you, are you all right? You look, you look nice. <laughs> Thank you so much. Like, yeah. yeah. When did you When did you come back? Um, I came right after. No, I came back Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You came with the rest of the uh, the, the athletes that came down. Yeah. What was the reception like? You won bronze in the women's long jump. Um, you've seen how we receive medal winners and what have you when they touch down in Ghana. We always have Jama and when Black Stars come back. Tell me what the reception was like when you got back. Well, I didn't have any other person to come support like on the, on the track, track and field side. Yeah. All of them came to support the boxers. But, you know, I think it was for every one of us. But it was more of the boxers than, yeah. you know, track and field. Yeah, so, it, so you're saying that it's possible that the people that were at the airport to welcome the boxers, some of them probably didn't even know that it was you. Is that one the problem? No, no. <laughs> So you were just following them, it's like you were not there at all? Okay, so some people recognized me. Okay. And then due to them, like people were also able to know that, oh, this is Deborah. Oh. And even me, like I went to town yesterday and then I had a few people recognizing me and be like, I want to be sure, is that Aqua? And I'm like, oh yeah, it's me. And they were like, oh, wow. okay, so how do we know it's you? And I have to show them pictures and videos oh. to, you know, to prove that it's me. So in other words, you have to constantly be proving to people that this is you. Yeah. For those that have been recognized in a <laughs> Because I had my hair. Okay. I done my hair, but okay. I took it out. So, uh, yeah, that makes a difference. That's interesting. Uh, and how are you finding that? Um, life before you won a medal at the Commonwealth Games and after you won a, a medal, is there something different? Is there something, how does it feel like? Okay, so now I'm getting the exposure. Okay. It, it wasn't there before. So um, I think I think if I'm so proud, yeah. but because before, like I I remember I told you I had an interview and I told you that I wanted to quit track and yes. field because I know it wouldn't be easy, yeah. you know, life after school. Then living in the U.S. since I'm not a citizen and I don't have a Greek card, it was going to be hard. But right now um, I'm kind of talking to a few agents and I know with them I'll be getting a different visa. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling, yeah. So um, let's just stay on that. So you're telling me that after the Commonwealth Games, you've suddenly had people reaching out, agents reaching out and, and, and trying to represent you about going pro? Okay, so um, I had two that I was talking to and that was even before Worlds. Okay. And then I had another one afterwards. Okay. And they were all talking about me improving my jump. And then, because that'll be where I'll be able to get more money, yes. you know, yeah. Get a so, deal. Mm -hmm, get mm -hmm. a deal. But after Commonwealth Games, I had like two more. So right now I'm talking to like four or five agents. Four or five agents. Wow. But I haven't made a decision yet. Yeah. I'm still, you know. In the process. I'm still in the process. That is just interesting. I'm very excited for you because uh, usually that is what we all want. You, you know, you, you spoke about that in that interview that we had. Uh, a few months ago about the fact that if you finish school uh, and, and, and uh, you don't get, get any kind of support, you might consider quitting the sport. So will you say that winning that bronze medal was the life-changing event for you or potentially could be a life-changing moment for you? Well, I would say yes and no, because okay. I was still going to quit anyway. Mm. And even though I still, even though right now I don't think I would want to do that, because, like I said, I'm getting more people, like I'm getting the exposure and stuff like that. But before, like I wanted to quit. And even afterwards, I wanted to quit. But I had my coach, my coach had my back and we're still talking. He was like, well, he doesn't think that I should quit. And he thinks that I have the potential, like I have the um, whatever it takes to go pro. So I shouldn't quit. But I was still thinking, because I was talking to um, companies, I was talking to my head coach about helping me get like a job. You know, yeah, like a, a real job. A, a regular of, job. Yeah, regular job, yeah. So I was going to go for that instead of uh, to continue with the sport. That would have meant that you were quitting athletics. Like I'm uh, done, like the other athletes also quit because yeah. they don't get enough support yeah. after school. Um, and all of this, all of this new excitement that we are talking about, um, all of it could have ended really even before it began, isn't it? Because yeah. you made it to Birmingham by miracle. What happened there? Because 
we all know about the story of you arriving there very, very late, um, getting there at midnight, competing them, you know, a few hours later. What happened with the whole visa situation? How did you get to Birmingham so, so late, if just a few hours to your event? Okay, so uh, before I left to Eugene, I yeah. sent my visa to the embassy. But the, the passport. I sent my passport to the embassy, sorry. So um, what happened was... This is the UK embassy. This is the UK, yeah. No, UK. yeah, so the problem was I sent it to a wrong location. I, I made a mistake with the address. Okay. So it went to a wrong location. So um, I asked one of our volunteer coaches to check on it for me. But he wasn't also there. But he didn't tell me. He didn't text me on time to tell me. I would have asked one of my teammates to go and check on it for me. So he didn't let me know until I came back. So I came back and I sent, I sent it to the, to, the, to the right location, but I wasn't getting any response. So right after that, I stopped training. Like, I wasn't training. I didn't train on, like, four or five days. I think even a week. Why were you not training? You didn't because think I thought, that like, yeah, like, you your all hope was lost. Like, I, oh, I wouldn't wow. be able to. And then the reason why I thought I wasn't able to, I, w I wouldn't be able to go was because I know this other Jamaican, like a pro athlete that was coming to the Commonwealth too. I sent my passport to the embassy before she did, but she got her visa two uh, days after I got mine. So, so you thought you weren't going to get I thought I wasn't going to get my visa because so what's the difference? I stopped training. Like I wasn't doing nothing. I didn't hit the gym. Like I didn't do no abs, no nothing. I thought I was going to quit because the Commonwealth game was going to be my last competition of the year. So if I'm not going to go to the Commonwealth, there was the point training. So yeah. that's remarkable because before the Commonwealth Games, you had no hope you were going to get your visa. So you stopped training. Mm -hmm. Then you got your visa, flew out, arrived at 12 in the morning and went to compete. And then straight up, you topped the qualifying. That is ridiculous. That was, that was, that was, I was, I was also shocked because right after I got my visa, I was like, oops, now I, I got my visa. So now I have to do something. Do I go to the gym? Do I go to practice? So that very night, I had to go to a facility to do something. The gym? I didn't, I didn't even use the gym. I had to go to the track to do some run throughs to see. Because if, you were leaving the next morning. I was leaving the next morning to go to the, to the track to see if I still have my speed, you know? <laughs> because that's what my coach was more concerned about, that uh, he is scared that I might lose my speed. Yeah. So I went to the track to make sure that at least the speed is there. Yeah, yeah so I did. And then on the plane, I had this uh, band that I was kind of like, you know, to do some exercises, you know? Exactly. <laughs> like, because it yeah, was also a like very that. long flight. Mm -hmm. It took you more than what? Almost 24 hours to get to Almost. Take me through that ordeal. I went, I went from College Station to Dallas, okay. and I had an eight-hour layover. I, I think it should be nine because the flight was delayed, and I think a one and a half hour. So, so it you might be about nine. At the airport for, for nine, nine and a half yeah, hours. It was nine and a half. Just sitting there. Just sitting there. So I had to call some few friends to play games with them to kind of keep me company, wow. stuff like that. And then we got to, um, what was it? Paris. Paris yeah. Yes. And then because of the layover, like my plane left because it was supposed to be nine. Yeah. So, so I got there. Your original flight delayed. Yes. Your connecting flight had left also, by the yes. time you got mm -hmm. there. So I wasn't able to go. So the only one that I could get was the late, the late one. So I had to wait from nine o'clock to eight p.m. Yeah. So that's about like eleven hour, like wow. eleven, ten, eleven, twelve hours layover. Yeah. Before you finally got. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. that, is, that is remarkable, <laughs> and and you know because you see, and I say this because you all remember during the World Championships when the Kenyan athlete Omanyala, Omanyala. his visa was delayed also in delayed, the same yeah. manner yours was delayed. Mm -hmm. But once he got his visa, the Kenyans booked him on a first-class ticket, yeah. and he was in first class. You were traveling in the economy this whole time. I, I was. So your feet. I remember. I remember. I told them to to even book the flight right after I got the visa. Like I wanted to leave that very night, but yeah. I didn't get any response, so I had to wait. Wow. That is. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say, but your sheer grit is uh, it's amazing and it's it's, it's admirable. Because to come there, especially after what happened at the World Championship and all of the travel ordeal and the visa issues and not training and to do what you did is absolutely ridiculous. Because, and that's what's why I want to go back to that World Championship. Because coming into that competition, I think you were ranked what, number five? Number five. Number five in the yeah. world. Mm -hmm. And you didn't make the final. All three jumps, false jumps. What happened there? Because that, to me... And I'm sure you also probably felt the same. 
like it was a missed opportunity. I'm interested in what happened and the emotions you felt after that competition. I worked really hard. I really worked hard because even right after NCA was done, I had to go to Jamaica to compete, to kind of keep myself active. Um, I think I was, still, I, was, I was scared. I was so scared that I was going to compete amongst the best in the world. And then that competition being my first like big like ever big big competition like I was so scared. I remember I didn't I didn't sleep throughout the whole night. Like I don't remember closing my eyes for even an hour. This is the day before the competition. A day before the competition. I didn't even sleep. Like I was thinking about the competition like the whole night. And I remember me talking to myself that I think I can do this. And my coach was like, whenever you think like you're thinking about the competition too much, that you can't do nothing, just do something like it's do some exercises or whatever. I tried to do it. It wasn't working. I had to start coming up with my own dream in my head to kind of put me to sleep. But it wasn't still working. Wow. <laughs> I would start from somewhere, create a, like a dream, like, you Let's know. Your mind up. And then by the time I realized, like, like, back to thinking about the whole competition, stuff like that. So. I was like, well, there's nothing I can do about this. So I had to call. I, I, I think I had called a few friends to talk to them, you know, to, to keep myself awake and not think about the competition. But I was still, you know, still thinking, even though I was on the phone talking to friends and stuff like that, I was still thinking about the competition. So I think I was, I was afraid. Like, I was so scared yeah. that um, I got to the competition. I had not eaten. I had, I had to, to force myself to eat. My coach was standing somewhere Lost watching appetite. me. Lost All appetite. Because I of the nervousness. Yeah. The anxiety. I remember my coach got close and he was like, Deborah, are you okay? I'm like, yeah. He was like, no, you're not. So I'm like, what do you mean? He was like, I know what you're doing. I was like, what am I doing? He was like, you're forcing to eat something. I'm like, yeah. Because I had to eat banana. I had two bananas. I can't even swallow, so I have to force myself, you know. And this add all water because to... of the anxiety. Uh, yes. Of the biggest thing. Yes. Because there are a lot of athletes, like, there are a lot of good athletes, I'm like, I have to be in the midst of them, you know, like, then I suspect the medals from them, and then going to my social media, yeah. seeing a lot of people talking about, oh, bring gold to Ghana, bring gold to Ghana, we want gold, we want gold, so thinking about all those, I'm like, I have to do this, you know, <laughs> that makes me more nervous. I mean, and, and that's the case, a situation where you feel like perhaps a psychologist would have helped. I think you so. Know, because you didn't have anyone talking to you. You were dealing with everything by yourself. You didn't have anyone prepare you for the competition on the psychological side of things. It was all physical, like training, yeah. training, training, or technique. But there was no one to work on the mental on the mental side of things. And I think perhaps it's one thing that we take for granted when it comes to sports men and women because it's crucial because that's probably what affected you yeah. um, ahead of that World Championships, uh, you know. Um, Debbie, let's talk about um, the competition itself, the World Championship. You had three false jumps. Yeah. Um, I remember speaking to you after. You seemed very disappointed. But what was the whole reaction like, even from a personal level and the people around you after the competition? Because it seemed to me, like I said earlier, like that was a missed opportunity because at that point you were also having issues with Birmingham, you didn't even know if you were going to go. I think I knew I was going to go, Definitely. but because by then, even I wasn't hearing from the coach, I knew my visa, my passport is with the embassy and I was going to get my visa. Okay. By then I, had not, I didn't know if yeah. I, I didn't get the visa or not, but I feel like the pressure took over me, I couldn't control, even though on the competition day I tried to make it work. I had my coach, my head coach also there as well. And then we talked about um, being able to make it to at least the final. Yeah. Or if, yes. And if possible, if I'm able to medal, then he can also help me to um, get sponsorships and stuff like that. Yeah. So I think that also got into me. Because I was thinking about, you know, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this. Right after the right on the competition day, my approach changed. I went from I go from 180, 118, and I ended up going from 122, mm. and I was still making it no jump. So that that should tell that I was. So you were really, taking off way before the board, way outside the board. No, I well. think or way in front. Way in front. Yeah, it wasn't way in front. I think 
I think it was mostly like this much fell. Yeah. Yeah, one where I think the the first jump was like this, second jump was like that, and then the third jump I made it because I was like, uh, so that's what we always talk about that. If you miss if you miss the first and second jump, just try to make the third one work to take it to the finals, and then we work from there. Yeah. So I thought like. I was gonna make it like you know, just control your speed or whatever to make the finals, and then right. yeah, we'll know what to do from there. So that's what I tried to do on the third jump, yeah. but the third jump was, it was so up, disappointing. But it just wasn't good enough. Yeah, because I was and I was so disappointed. Yeah. And even thinking about what happened in Birmingham, the first jump, like my qualification, could have even got a medal, maybe, because yeah. yeah. at 185, and then I think this the third place was 180 something. So even if not to, to make me get a medal, at least I would have been number four or five. Right. Yeah, right. I watch it. Yeah. I mean, that's, listen, that's, uh, that's interesting because, you know, we talk about the fine margins, you know, in athletics. It's, you, know, you, you, train, you train years and years and years and you have only three attempts to try and make it. The same as even... A hundred meters. You train yeah. years and years and years, and all of your future, all, everything is determined Depend in on... ten seconds. It's really, it's a very. Um, I always say that athletics is a very unfair sport. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it is very, it's very unfair. You were not in Birmingham. You were not just listed for the long jump. You were also the reserve for the four by one hundred meter relay. Yeah. Have you been? We know that long jumpers, a lot of them have speed, but do you? When you went to Birmingham, did you ever train with the girls to try and see if it, it came to it? Because you didn't even have time to do anything. Yeah. So um, nobody approached me to, 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 to train with the girls. Nobody approached me. I don't know if it was because I, I went there late or because they think I'm tired. But if they ever approached me to do it, then I think I was, I was going to do it. Yeah. Because even it's a speed, it's a speed work, and yeah, that was going to even prepare me for the long jump as well. So I was going to do it, but nobody told me about it. Yeah. Winning the bronze medal here is probably, in, in, in the Commonwealth Games, is what has, what has opened a lot of people's eyes to you. But for those of us that have followed you a long time, you've broken the national record, if I'm not mistaken, at least three times now. Yeah. Um, you won silver at the African Games in Rabat in mm -hmm. 2019. I remember in those games, uh, as well, you had the moment with the relay team where the baton exchange didn't go exactly well, and mm -hmm. I remember the conversation after, um, and everything seemed to point to the fact that everybody believed that it was your fault. Uh, is that something? Do, what do you remember from that incident? And did it did, did it ever occur to you that you thought everybody was blaming you for dropping the baton, or what was what was that all about? I, I think, okay, so from Coach um, Andrew's point of view, I, I think he's, he said I was supposed to, to wait for the baton to be, you know, in my hand before I grab it. Yeah. But he said right after I reached out, I was ready to grab it to go. Uh -huh. Yeah, so kind of. But what I also think is that you bringing the baton to me should make sure that I have it before you let go. That's right. Yeah, so... If I didn't make it, then you you were not supposed to let go. Yeah. But she let go, and also wasn't able to. So even though it's my fault, but I'm not used to running a relay. Right. Like I think that was that was my first or second time doing the, the yeah. relay. Mm -hmm. And then it wasn't it, the, we were not used to uh, doing the exchanges like very often. So yeah, because I was I was there to do the long jump and then the relay as well so we didn't get enough time to spend with each other you know on the baton exchanges and stuff like that but i can blame myself and then blame blame it on the two of us because yeah. you're supposed to also make sure that i have it before you let go so but i think most of the fault is from me i will accept it <laughs> <laughs> when you won that silver medal and you went back to school you were still an undergraduate student then you yeah. went back to school what was the reception like when you went back to school because to win silver and be the second best in the whole of Africa is a big deal. Yeah, it was a big deal, but I didn't... It wasn't a big jump. Right. Yeah, it wasn't a big jump, so... I wasn't, I wasn't concerned about winning bronze, but I was concerned about my jump, because you can win a medal and then jump like 6-2, which can take you nowhere. Yeah. So I always tell people... It just means that the field isn't competitive enough. Yes. And then maybe I wasn't prepared enough. Maybe I thought my coach wasn't there. 
and then going to a Commonwealth game, there was no tape measure to, to do your full, you know, yeah. the, um, your run, up, your approach and everything. So that was also another factor because I had to do a lot of run throughs before I was able to, to get my whole thing. And by the time I got it, I was already tired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so I, there's one thing I, was, I, I tell my, my, my teammates that I'd rather be, a, I want to I wanna come last in the competition and jump like seven. Right. Right. Then just jump like six two, six three, six four, and then come first. Like there's no point. 